The official weight of Muhammad Ali, 211 pounds and one half. 211 and a half pounds. The official weight is Zora Foley, 202 and a half pounds. Are you taking Zora Foley too lightly? Why would you say that? Because every indication has been that you're confident that you can beat Zara. I'm confident I can whip all of them. This ain't nothing new. My image has been confident. What you're trying to make it look like something new for? I'm always confident I can whip all of them. You're being extremely truculent. Whatever truculent mean, if that's good, I'm that. <laughs> <laughs> Zara, what's your reaction to the uh, champion's apparently edgy mood at this moment? Well, he's showing a sign of uh, in condition the same as I am, and I'm sure he's in condition. I'm sure it'd be a real good fight. You feel at all fearful, quite honestly, a little tense. Well, I'm a little tense. Uh, out of 15 years of fighting, out of all of those 80 some fights I had, I've been a little tense, and I think every fight is. For the uh, chain drag. Mr. Moody, may I have your present? <laughs> cheerful cries, black balloons that we'll send soaring 
as we arise. Black balloons to tell our story. Black balloons that last untied. Cause if you think I'm gonna Uncle Tom, you might as well go on and get your bum. Cause it's all over now, mighty whitey. It's all over now. <laughs> That's this raggedy thing. I'm telling you, I'm, you know, I look down. Settled tomorrow, your problems with the federal government. Uh, Archie Moore last night said he thought it might take you a year of exhibitions to get sharp again. Do you agree with that? No, it takes me about six weeks training. Six no weeks. exhibitions or nothing. Uh, I know myself better than anybody else. But uh, we hope for quite a long run. Thank you. Come to get my belt. Thank you very much, Jim. <coughs> Mohammed, in a way, being in this play is nothing new for you. You're saying things you've been saying outside of the theater for quite a number of years, aren't you? Right. Uh, this is one reason I accepted it. Uh, the original cast, uh, the original play, had uh, quite a few uh, things in it that uh, <coughs> I couldn't participate in. And Oscar Brown Jr., who wrote the musical and everything, uh, he was nice enough to take out the various curse words and profanity that was used. And it's a play concerning black people coming together uh, struggling for freedom, justice, and equality, uh, respecting black leadership, black authority, and um, just cleaning up and doing for self. And this is what it's all about. And it's good. And it's, I mean, the songs that I sing, for an example, one of them is entitled Better Far, a history of the black people in America. And another one is We Came in Chains, which we did. We didn't volunteer. Um, another one of the songs is entitled It's All Over Now, Mighty Whitey. And it's a real colorful show when the people uh, <clears throat> who participate, they are demonstrating the true feelings of black people in general throughout the country. And the few whites that participate in the show, uh, they are demonstrating the true feelings of millions of whites throughout the country. And I wouldn't, but wouldn't be in it if it wasn't the truth and if it wasn't real and clean. Why wouldn't you be in a play with four-letter words in it? I'm a Muslim. I'm a religious man, and I don't take part in nasty things. Do you? We gonna do the whole song, Black Balloon? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right at the end of Black Balloon. Stand by. What? Right at the end of it. Before going into the drive. Stand by. Oh. All this money you people are collecting. Now what's gonna be done with it? Tell you, mister, what we're going to do with the money? We're going to buy balloons. Balloons? Black balloons. In a sky so light, it seems snow white. On one bright morning soon, dancing in the sky, you're going to spy. Up high, a black balloon. All alone above, a sign of love. Release so called coons. Out from deep despair to open air. See there, more black balloons. In a mighty crowd, they'll form a cloud. And that proud afternoon, they'll eclipse the sun, a day begun by one big black balloon. Dedicate the day, musicians play. And sang gay soulful tunes. And we'll fill the street with dancing feet beneath big black balloons. Bless you. So Black balloons from everywhere 
black balloons that we'll send cheering to fill the air. Black balloons on this occasion, black balloons are what we need, black balloons for celebration once blacks been freed in a sky so light it seems no white one bright morning soon dancing in the sky you're gonna spy up high a black balloon all alone above a sign of love a release of so-called coons out from deep despair to a black balloons all filled with glory and pumped with pride dedicate the day musicians play and sing gay soulful tunes and we'll fill the street with dancing feet beneath big black balloons blow out all our brains or else just set us free no justice no freedom no equality chains working from sun up to sundown 16 hours a day without a payday chains chains look at these chains no freedom no justice no equality 400 years working from sun up to sundown chains And now your choice must be to either blow out all our brains or else just set us free. Change, change, change. We came in change. 400 years. Lynching, raping, no justice. We came in change. Look at these chains. Change the Chinese, the Hawaiian, the Puerto Rican, the African, more citizen, more justice than the 400 year old slave. Look at these chains. Woo! Change, change. We came in chains. We came in chains. Look at these chains. Look at these chains. 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 400 long years from sun up to sun down without a payday. We came in chains. Okay, Dwight, okay, Ali, from 400 years. You know all. Chains! Chains! We came in misery. Now all I have of history. We came in change. We must remember that. For that and that alone explains exactly. From, from the last verse. From the last verse going out. Uh, we came in chains. Right. right. We came in chains. Slaves, chains, chains.
came here 400 years ago. I came here 400 years ago on a cold, nasty, wet prison of death, a slave ship called a good ship Jesus. I didn't see old lady Liberty waving me in. Mm -mm, no, I did not. All I saw was the willow on the bayou bow its head in shame because we came in chains, we came in misery, now all our suffering and pains are part of history, we came in chains, we must remember that, for that and that alone explains exactly where we're at. We came in chains. We came as living loot, so you could boast, slave gotten gains. We've grown beneath your boot. We came in chains. And how our blood was spilled Together with our sweat It stains this nation we helped build We came in chains We didn't volunteer And yet today the fact remains We'll still held captive here We came in chains now we say cut us loose Though that may go against your grain Still there's no excuse We came in chains Now who will bear the cost Till every one of us regains The freedom we have lost Still in chains, economical chains Spiritual change, mental change, change, change. We came in change, change the first part and the last time.
yesterday, for example, with a consistency that was really bothering me because this. <laughs> off the winner after three and one half years this will be a bigger victory to me than just winning the fight itself and I think I can find room for all these shuffle in this fight <laughs>
I look at this as I'm fighting for my freedom, not just to fight, but this is for my freedom. This is the way I look at it. I will make one prediction, that the people will be very surprised to see my condition, my speed, my reflexes after three years, and I will also predict that anyone uh, who saw any of my fights, if I have slowed down, the naked eye won't be able to detect it. How many rounds do you want me to work today? About, about 97, 97 rounds. 97. They ain't too many rounds to work. I'm going to work 90 with him. I'm tired. He's tired. Well, let's work five rounds today. No, Can you work, work five rounds? No, I don't think five good rounds a day. This guy was not getting shaped. He's a counterpuncher. I'm more sharper mentally than I have been for any fight. Various things that's happened to me and the write-ups and this and that for, for the past three years have made me much stronger and more determined to come back still a winner over many who predicted I won't. There's newspaper articles about he's fat, he's out of shape, no one has ever come back. And once all of the experts and the critics have gotten this in print and then for me to come, and if I can, which I think I'm going to do, they say it's a miracle for a man of my caliber, even top trainers, people like Jack Dempsey, uh, Joe Frazier's training. All these people have been saying it's impossible for a fella to get in shape to do the job that I have to do. So not only will I be defeating Quarry if I win, but all of these so-called experts, and I'll still be right and they'll still wrong after all. I'm just as fast on my feet, I'm faster, I'm running more, I'm training harder, I'm walking longer, I'm eating less food. Yesterday he was alive. You're a big liar. The worst businessman in the world. You're never on time and you're alive.
prediction that I forecast and what will happen to Joe Frazier. This prediction will come out exactly five minutes before the fight and this is dedicated just to all the little people, all of the fans and who don't have the money to come to Madison Square, who don't have the money to buy the ringside seats and get the first class news like the big shots in the press. This is a treat just for the people in the theaters. And five minutes before I meet Tumblr, I don't encourage people to bet. I don't believe in gambling, religious man. But what I say is that I'm gonna seal this up now. I'm gonna seal this up now. And I'm giving it to John Condon, a director and a big, one of the bosses there at Madison Square Garden. And this is it. And I want you to give this to me the night of the fight, about 15 minutes before the fight, I will open it up five minutes before the fight, bring the cameras in the room, and I read the prediction and just what will happen to Joe Frazier. And I don't even want Joe Frazier to know what's going to happen. Won't. Not the press. I don't want nobody in the dressing room. Good luck, Mohammed. I'll Come show on. you what I think about your new heavyweight champion, all this talk about Joe Frazier. I'm telling you five minutes before the fight, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Is it in verse? Is it in verse or just regular? No poem, just exactly how the people can feel, how the experts can feel, what they're going to say after the fight, and exactly the outcome. How it will end and everything. It's right here. Ali, is, it, is this to keep everybody from keep asking you questions all day long about how you're going to do? Well, they can ask me questions all day long about how I feel about boxing, but as far as the outcome and the prediction, they won't get no answers. So this, this stuff, right? right. Want to sit down? Straighten it all out. Okay. Let's see if we got a good shot going on this thing now. I got a question to ask you to get you going. We, we went to a psychiatrist who studied you, psychologist. He says you're a great showman, but he says inside, actually, the reason, one of the main reasons that you are constantly, you know, aware of the fact that you are, have great confidence saying that you're going to win is because you're trying to instill in yourself the confidence that you can win. You follow what you I say? And what do you that I must be an expert because everything that I've said for the past 10 years has come true. And I don't think it's luck or it's just trying to build up confidence within myself. And if it is, then I would say I'm more of a, a prophet than he is. So you're not trying to psych yourself? Psych myself. I'm the best fighter to ever live. Can't you see my face? Do you see any scratches? I'm not talking. I've been in this game 18 years, fella. Two-time United States Golden Club champion. Tell that psychiatrist. I'm two-time national AAU champion. World Olympic gold medal winner. 12 world heavyweight title fights. Tell him I was off for four years and had a six-week notice and came back and defeated Jerry Quarry and Oscar Bonavino quicker, quicker and easier than Joe Frazier without a scratch. He said all that hollering is because you are inadequate. He inadequate. Says, you have inadequacies. Well, well you he tell says. him to go get all of my films and watch and see that I do just what I hollered I would do. Now, Frazier, I just come from his...
Mike, is that right there? Yeah. Is that for a television? It's not the PA yeah. mic. Yeah, it's a television mic, Muhammad. Tommy, will your mic reach over here? No, Yeah, it's a crowd to be quiet. You'll be able to hear. So Johnny Sulo says, "Close both of Joe Frazier's eyes in the second fight. Uh, his nose was bleeding, and one side of his head was swelled as big as my fist. And Joe Frazier collapsed in the dressing room." That's how tough Bonavina is. Plus, the second fight, he knocked Bonavina down twice with two good shots. What? Uh, nobody has ever been able to stop him, and uh, not only stopping him is considered good, but when you call the round, that makes it extra, extraordinarily good. What about Bonavina's fight plan to uh, get you into a corner? He plans to get me into a corner. Well, I understand that, but the plans change when you get in the ring, see? What about, he says you've won mostly on cuts rather than uh, a good blow. He said, I've won mostly on cuts. Yeah. Well, I've won a few on cuts because I hit hard, and they happen to be in spots that were not knockout, were not knockout positions, like over the eye. And the power of the punch did it. But uh, you've heard my poem and my prediction, and uh, he wants to make me suffer, and i like to announce her. I'm going to taunt him, I'm going to talk to him, and whoop him. <laughs> He'll never talk about another soul, brother. What were you attempting to do in your sparring today, uh, Muhammad? You're a little flat footed. What were you attempting to do in your sparring today? What'd you say? What were you attempting to do in your sparring today? Just in fighting. I'm not going to be doing too much moving in this fight. This fight will be, there'll be a lot of, I might be 70% just flat footed. <laughs> just uh, waiting for him. He's not fast at all. I, I get on my bicycle when I'm meeting a good fast man, somebody swift like Quarry, and uh, people like uh, Carl Miltonberger, people like Sonny Liston, and, and Cleveland Williams, fast hard hitters, but I've watched his films, and he's flat-footed, and he's real slow on his feet. Your and I have no need to do too much uh, backing off and running from him, but uh, I'll have to stand there a little while with him and let him wear himself down and give him shots, let him have openings and miss and then get him. With your reach and height, you think you'll have no problem jabbing him? Huh? With your reach and height, you'll probably have no uh, trouble jabbing him? Well, I have no trouble jabbing nobody, because I'm, I'm fast. Uh, but, uh, Working on body punching today in these first few rounds. Do you plan to body punch him, or will you go after his head? Yeah, I'm going to body punch him. I'm going to body punch him and do some everything to him. And uh, I'm going to, you know, like I said, uh, he's not... I'm not looking for round eight and not looking for round ten. Exactly round nine. Uh, what, what, what was the purpose of your dive this afternoon? Uh, all of the critics and the people who hoped that one day they'd see me down. No more rounds to fill him out. Not about a round, two rounds to fill him out. And then tag him in the third and fourth round, shake him up a little. And, uh, 
<laughs> Seventh round, you know, talk to him. You know, tell him, you know, I got a few things. I tell him when I'm whooping him. And then after I'm whooping him and talking to him, uh, about the eighth round, tag him again. Let him know he's got one more round to go. <laughs> then, in the ninth round, he shall be mine in round nine. <laughs> and if he don't go in nine, I'm gonna tell him at the end of the round, you a bad man. <laughs> okay. I was gonna stay a little quiet.